Although the year has just started, the space industry has experienced quite a few twists and turns. From Blue Origin taking over Honeybee Robotics to SpaceX being responsible for a somewhat anticipated booster crash into the moon, it goes without saying that things have been quite interesting. But what should space fans know about the industry right now? And what does this say about the future of humanity? For all of this and more, stay tuned. First of all, let's talk about that unexpected Blue Origin acquisition. For those of you who don't know, Blue Origin made headlines a few days ago after the announcement that the space company had acquired Honey Bee Robotics, a Colorado-based company that specializes in space-based robotic systems. According to reports, Honey Bee will become a wholly owned subsidiary of Blue Origin as a result of the deal struck. And it sounds like time is of the essence, with the closure of this deal being set for mid-February at the latest. But why would Blue Origin need to acquire a robotics company anyway? Well, it goes without saying that the Jeff Bezos-owned company is somewhat lacking in power when compared to SpaceX. And after Blue Origin made a scene a last year after losing lucrative space contracts to the rival company headed by Elon Musk, we aren't too surprised that steps are being taken to increase its prominence in the industry. Honeybee Robotics does, after all, have extensive expertise when it comes to planetary robotics, space-based drilling, drive electronics, and of course, other space mechanisms that will undoubtedly complement Blue Origin as a company. And according to Keel Davis, the president of Honeybee Robotics, this is a pleasant move throughout. When speaking in an interview after the announcement was made, Davis stated that after after building the capabilities of their brand for around 40 years, joining Blue Origin is a major step forward for the company. As a subsidiary of Blue Origin, Honey Bee Robotics will finally be involved in the actual drive of space tourism after all. Not everything about this deal is widely known though, which has some feeling quizzical. You see, the terms of the deal have been somewhat clouded in darkness since the announcement was made, and while we don't expect to see detailed descriptions of the ins and outs of the deal, there are certain factors that companies can't wait to disclose that have been omitted. A great example is the value that was actually placed on Honey Bee Robotics. Despite how expensive acquisitions are in the business world, the value for which a company is bought over is usually the first piece of information reported. Just look at the incredible cost of Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard a few weeks ago, which came in at an unbelievable amount of 68.7 billion US dollars, an amount that Microsoft was somewhat pleased to share as it solidified the company as a true titan of the gaming industry. The only thing we really know about this acquisition is that Honey Bee Robotics will be carrying on, business as usual, but that this business will no doubt be done in the favor of Blue Origin. The true intent can be found in the history of the company, though, which since its establishment in 1983 has completed more than 1,000 projects for NASA, the U.S. Department of Defense, and other prominent figures in the space industry. Suffice to say, having Honey Bee Robotics in the corner of Blue Origin is a massive win for the runner-up to SpaceX. Will this be enough to overtake Elon Musk, though? We'll have to see about that. Either way, it sounds like the price privatized space industry is getting stronger. This statement is coming off of reports that the first privatized mission to another planet may very well be launching sometime this year. But what type of mission will this be? And what planet is under investigation? Well, if reports are to be believed, it's Venus that will be getting some attention in the upcoming few months with plans to launch a small robotic probe into the terrifying atmosphere of the planet to scan its clouds for the chemicals essential for life. For those of you who don't know, Venus is currently plagued with a dangerous environment that has been caused by a runaway greenhouse effect. Essentially, this is global warming on a massive scale, which has caused temperatures to soar beyond anything human beings can handle. That being said, we know that not all creatures are as fragile as us humans, which is why these experiments are being carried out regardless of the apparent lack of life-forming conditions. The various missions being launched in honor of this intention have been called the Venus Life Finder missions and are by far the most ambitious actions from the private sector in the last few years. Remember, the majority of private Privatized aeronautical companies like Blue Origin have launched satellites and the like over the past few years in conjunction with NASA, making them quasi-privatized actions. So you can imagine just how exciting it is for space fans to see the private sector going off on its own and doing something so ambitious. But how can the private sector afford this set of missions without governmental help? Well, the simple answer is that space travel is getting a lot cheaper than it used to be. We're still looking at an amount in the millions, but with reusable rockets and more brilliant minds than we've ever had before at our disposal, it feels like space is no longer the final frontier. As a result of these factors, there is more access to space now than ever before, with most developed countries having a space industry of their own. But things have now proceeded beyond this point by introducing a number of companies interested in the free real estate that comes with space tourism. We've already seen companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Virgin Galactic trying their hands at space travel, so it only makes sense that privatized institutions will now try their hand at doing what national agencies have failed at 
that, because of the red tape attached to certain actions and activities, an exploration of the cloud composition of Venus would no doubt be said to be a waste of resources if brought to a national agency. But since the entire intention of the exploration is to simply know more without worrying about the crippling of a country's budget, it goes without saying that missions like this will increase with time. It's something that's incredibly exciting for all those space lovers out there, as it means that in time, we'll know more than ever about the expansive recesses of our massive universe. Texas also appears to be emerging as a superpower in the new space age. For years now, Florida has held the title of biggest regional superpower when it comes to the space industry. There are more launches within the ambits of Cape Canaveral over the years than anywhere else, after all. But it sounds like Texas is willing to throw its hat into the ring, and it's slowly emerging as a superpower in its own right. This has been a long time coming, though, with Texas actually playing a much bigger role in the space industry than you may have realized until now. You see, Texas has a long history of being involved in the aerospace industry, especially when it comes to NASA's own Johnson Space Center, which calls Houston, Texas its home. Nowadays, it's a company known as Firefly Aerospace that's drawing attention, though. And according to reports, it's just a few steps away from landing on the moon. For those of you who don't know, the Texas-based Institute has designed a lunar lander called Blue Ghost and is on track for a lunar mission said to take place come September 2023. While it may be true that this is still a long time away, it's no doubt a step in the right direction. And since humans haven't set foot on the lunar surface in decades, this might just be what we all need to get back into space again. And if that's the case, Texas is going to be remembered for hosting the mission that changed it all and increased funding tenfold. Last but not least, let's take a look at the Falcon 9 crash set for March. As it's this headline that has ordinary folks like us worried about the state of the space race. You see, around seven years ago, a Falcon 9 rocket was used to carry the Deep Space Climate Observatory satellite into orbit around the Earth. But as they say, what goes up must come down. And the upper booster of that same rocket appears to be headed for a collision course with our beloved Moon. According to reports, the upper booster will collide with the lunar body in March of this year. But since the collision is set for the dark side of the Moon, it's not something we'll be able to witness from Earth. We do have to stress that planetary bodies often hit the Moon. In fact, that's where many craters come from. So we are in no imminent danger because of this crash. It's just the first time man-made space junk has done so. And there you have it. Everything you need to know about the headlines revolving around the space industry at the moment. What do you think of the acquisition of Honey Bee Robotics, though? And are you excited about the future of privatized space companies? Be sure to let us know in the comments section down below.